Hello, everybody, and welcome to tonight's presentation of UOA Live, What's New for 2024. I'm Steve Van Dievener, the president-elect of the United Ostomy Association. This is a program we have put together to let you, our constituents, know what's going on with UOA during the 2024 year. We have a tremendous amount of, of, of things happening, uh, and we thought this was a good way to be able to bring you up to speed. Uh, we are going to talk about uh, the let you know about the, the date and location of our 2025 conference. We're going to talk about some of the new programs that are on the website. We also are at advocacy people who are done, doing an absolutely tremendous job are going to talk about that. And then last but not least, uh, we are going to talk about our brand new affiliation with a company. This is going to be the kickoff to something that maybe some of you have heard about, but I'm still not going to tell you what the name of it is until we get to that point. My co-host is Amy Lee Reese. As many of you know, she and I always we seem to be the co-host for anything uh, for UOAA. So I'm going to pass it over to Amy Lee. Thanks, Steve. I'm happy to be your co-host again. Um, so my name is Amy Lee Reese. I'm the Director of Affiliated Support Group Affairs for UOAA. I've been in this position for a year now, um, and I'm getting to meet so many of you from across the country. That's the highlight of my, my volunteer work. I was diagnosed at age 20 with inflammatory bowel disease and received a life-saving ostomy as a result of that when I was 32. I volunteer locally in Denver, Colorado at the Ostomy Association of Metro Denver. And I also work as a certified health and wellness coach helping others. We have a really great program tonight, as Steve mentioned. Um, but the most important thing about tonight, well, there's a lot of important things, but one of the most is having you here. That means so much to us. And we really want to hear your feedback and we want to hear your comments and your questions. So please write those in the chat. And we'll make sure that we can either respond to that real time as the program's running, or we can, uh, we will be able to save time at the end of the program to have a live question and answer session uh, to get to all your feedback as much as we can and your, um, your comments. So uh, without further ado, let's get this party started. I'm gonna um, introduce UOAA's president, Cheryl Ori. Cheryl is, like I said, the current president of UOAA and has been involved with the organization since 2009. She holds a bachelor's degree in nursing. She was diagnosed with colorectal cancer in 2008 and has a permanent colostomy. Cheryl is involved with all the daily affairs and happenings of UOAA and is very passionate about erasing the stigma surrounding ostomy surgery and enhancing the quality of life of every ostomate to the fullest. Cheryl, come on out. Hello, thank you so Hi. much, Amy Lee. And thank you, You're Steve. You're so welcome. I'll let you take it away. Hey, thank you. I would like to offer everyone a very warm welcome. I'm so glad you've taken time out of your evening to be here tonight with us. I'd like to start off with reading our mission. Next slide. Our mission says that UOAA promotes quality of life for people with ostomies and continent diversions through information, support, advocacy, and collaboration. Next slide. And I just wanted you all to get a visual of our wonderful board of directors. Look at all these beautiful faces. We also have our past president, Jim Murray, and Ken Arquette, our co-founder and past president in the mix. These are what the folks look like who volunteer their time and coordinate with the office staff to make sure the mission of UOAA is carried out for us all. Now, I know many of you have been anticipating learning when and where the next conference will be, right? Next slide. When? Next conference is going to be Thursday, August 14th through Saturday, August 16th, 2025. Now, after conducting a comprehensive search around the country with our event strategist, looking at price packages, comfort for you, the best amenities, and making the most economical decision, keeping all of our attendees in mind, I am very excited to announce the conference location for 2025. Drum roll. Next slide. 
Our next conference is going to be at the Hyatt Regency Grand Cypress Resort in Orlando, Florida. Next slide. The centerpiece of this resort is the 800,000 gallon lagoon pool with 12 waterfalls, a water slide and swimming through caves. Next slide. Here's a couple of pictures of what your room will look like and one of the five restaurants on site. They will have special discounts for us in the restaurants. And yes, they will have refrigerators in every room. Next slide. There's a 21 acre private lake where you can rent canoes, sailboats, paddle boats, and kayaks and go fishing. There's a water slide, splash pad, poolside cabanas. There's a eight hole pitch and putt, five hole mini golf, basketball court, pickleball courts, beach, volleyball, bicycles. There's an arcade room and there's also a one mile and a three mile walking and jogging trail. Next slide. There's also rock climbing for both adults and kids and a 24 hour health club with Peloton bikes and much more. Next slide. And if that isn't enough, the Jack Nicklaus golf course offers 36 holes to challenge golfers of all skill levels. The 18 hole course also tests the skills of all levels and it simulates the conditions of the old course in St. Andrews, Scotland. And best of all, there's daily shuttles to the theme parks. Disney is about two miles away. Next slide. So mark your calendar, but don't forget among all these amenities and all of these things to do, don't you forget to attend our educational and general sessions. Make sure you come to the free stoma clinic and especially the exhibit hall so you can see all the new products and speak to manufacturers and suppliers. You want to meet your fellow ostomates and network with them and have always have a blast, have so much fun at our social events. We also might be having a really fun fundraising activity. Next slide. I'm sorry, mistake, can you go back? So I want you all to go ahead and uh, Google the website. It is Hyatt Regency Grand Cypress in Orlando, Florida. When you go to the website, you're gonna see, I want you to look around, you're gonna see that there's a resort fee. No, 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 no. You're not gonna be paying that. They're waiving that fee for our attendees. Now, also, we're going to have some other um, great things that are going to be posted on our website soon, too. You won't be able to register just yet, but there'll be more info on our website. So I can't wait to see everyone there. Next slide. Okay. And I'm very excited about that. Now, I want to talk about our strategic planning goals. So this year... We want to increase our affiliated support group and national memberships. We want to offer relevant and informative Ostomy Academy webinars. We're going to continue the advocacy strategies, increase education for home health care providers and nursing homes and general nursing. Uh, we're going to tell you about a PSA video I'm so excited about. And we're going to continue to update and add new educational resources, including those in Spanish. And we also want to increase and identify new revenue sources. And our wonderful leaders of the strategic planning teams will elaborate further in a moment on all these plans. Next slide. Now, none of these goals are achievable without the support of donors like you. Donations make this happen. So after our presentation tonight, we hope that you will feel compelled to donate to UOAA. It's easy. Just visit the website at www.ostomy.org slash donate and make an online donation, or you can mail your check to UOAA, P.O. Box 2293, Biddeford, Maine, 04005. Thank you all. Thanks, Cheryl. Wow, what great news. It's so fun to get it all out in the open now. Orlando, Florida, 2025. Here we come. I'm so excited. So excited. It's going to be so much fun. There's going to be so much to do, and it's going to be a great conference. It's sure Thank really you. Well.
So there'll be lots to lots more information um, upcoming on our website and on social media. So you guys look out for that. Yes. So we'll go ahead and um, move along with the program. Um, I'm going to talk now about our um, strategic plan. So my role as director of affiliated support groups is to work with the affiliated support groups. And right now we have 267 ASGs across the country. And this number is down for us. Um, this is something, this is why it's a goal for us to increase um, this number. So we're still feeling the effects from COVID. Some uh, ASGs were disbanded. We're having difficulty with membership. So we're really in a growth year to uh, you know, have new ASGs come join our affiliation and also to help support the ASGs that are um, that are vibrant and, and flourishing. It's really important to us as an organization uh, to support people after their surgery. That's part of our mission is to provide resources to those who are in need of emotional support. And I know we all handle our ostomy surgeries differently. We all need a different things. Of course, every situation is unique, but we know that the crucial component of quality care for ostomy and continent diversion patients is emotional support. There's some, I don't know if you can see it on this infographic, but we can um, put a link to this that's on our website. There's some really troubling statistics about the emotional support that's offered to our, um, our community of people that have ostomy surgery. Um, it says that 60% did not receive resources to organizations who support and advocate for patients that have had ostomy surgery. 68% of the people that were, um, that were uh, responded did not receive information about support groups. 70% were not provided with the opportunity to talk with somebody who has been through an ostomy or continent diversion surgery. And 78% were not provided the opportunity to discuss the emotional impact of the surgery. So there were 412 respondents for the surgery. So that's pretty staggering numbers. Um, and we here at UOAA realize how important that this is. And we know that we can fill this gap um, by our, um, our ASGs. So I know for me personally, I joined my local ASG chapter in 2019. And some of the reasons that I joined as a member, um, st I started off because I wanted to be up to date on all of you know, the, the new products that were coming out and techniques. And I wanted to learn from other ostomates that were you know, more veteran than I was about tips and tricks of taking care of their ostomy. I wanted to continue to learn ostomy about ostomy topics from trusted medical professionals. I know that you can Google things and you can of course get information on Facebook and all those other great web, uh, websites and platforms. But to me, the gold standard is to be able to receive that education from a professional, a medical professional. And when you go to a chapter meeting, whether it's virtually or in person, you can really network with these medical professionals in your community. So, you know, I've been able to, you know, find a great colorectal surgeon and get in touch with a wonderful dietitian and other professionals like WOCNs that, um, that collaborate with ASG chapters. As you can see from these pictures, I think one of the most important things about um, being an ASG member is having fun and being inspired. As I look at all of these smiling faces, um, every single one of them, I'm a better person because um, they're in my life. So another reason um, I'm in my ASG uh, is that I love to give back to people. You know, maybe I'm farther along in my journey and I can help someone just starting in their journey. <clears throat> that's why I took on some leadership roles locally and also at the national level. And that's another one of our, our goals for 2024 is to really uh, nourish our leaders and support our leader leaders. It's so important, the work that they do. So some benefits for 2024 uh, for our ASG leaders, our bi-monthly national leadership Zoom meetings. Uh, we had our first one last week. It was awesome. Over 40 people came. We had a really great uh, collaboration, got some good discussion in. Um, we also have a new Facebook private group to help with networking and collaboration for our leaders. We always have the access to the updated ASG Standards for Success, which is on our ostomy.org website. And we are um, getting out our private email group for exchanging newsletter ideas that will be coming soon. 
Another really cool, um, exciting program that we have to offer is the Ostomy Friends online program. This online program emphasizes sensitivity tra training to form a relationship between a person who has experience living with an ostomy and a person newly adjusting to life with an ostomy. So once you've completed, um, a certificate is provided to the ostomate who's taken the course and they can be entered into a registry to become a friend of a fellow ostomate. Currently, this is only available to UOAA ASG members with ostomies. However, in the near future, it will be expanded to a national database that will be powered by the organization Embracing Ostomy Life and Team Hope. So stay tuned for that. If you're interested in um, joining a local support group, you can go to our main homepage, ostomy.org. There's a tab that you can click on for support group finder and enter your zip code to find a local support group near you. You can also um, see here, there's, it says virtual, um, virtual non-local ASG. So there's a list of all of our um, ASGs that have a virtual option if that's a better uh, fit for you. Um, you may say, Amy Lee, I'm sorry, but I'm just not a support group kind of person. And I will accept that. I do understand. But there are still ways that you can get support and give support to UOAA. And that is our UOAA individual national membership. Um, this is something that you can do that can help contribute to our goals, influence um, the Ostomy Society, I'm sorry, community at a national level. So even if you're a member of an ASG, you can also become a UOAA national member. The membership is $35. And if medical professional you can join um, with a medical professional national membership for $50. So you can receive um, a packet of educational materials, special Phoenix pen, Stoma pen, membership stickers, and a discount to the Phoenix magazine. You can also be um, eligible to be on the board of directors. We're always looking for great leaders. So if you have any questions or um, comments, please reach out to myself. Um, my, uh, our staff member, Carrie Lynn Lane, who's the ASG membership coordinator, and also Steve uh, Van Devender, who's our president-elect, but has awesome expertise and experience with ASGs. Speaking of Steve, he is up next, so I'm going to have him come on out, and he can tell us all about the webinar series that we have coming up. Hi, Steve. Thanks, Amy Lee. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, some of you may wonder why in the heck I'm on that list. Uh, be, but I was an ASG leader for over 20 years uh, before I became involved on the national level. So you could kind of say that uh, I kind of cut my bones with the United Ostomy Association as a leader. And that's why uh, Amy Lee and I do the, do the ASG leadership meetings together. For those of you who are in Houston, that's why Amy Lee and I did the presentations together. And we jokingly refer to the three of us, Carrie Lynn, Amy, and Amy Lee, and I as the, as the three stooges uh, because we wor work very closely with each other. One of the things that we institu instituted, I shouldn't say we, but has been instituted by United Ostomy Association a few years ago are what we call Ostomy Academy webinars. One of the things about being an ASG leader, sometimes it's difficult to come up with topics uh, to have for your meeting that night. So we basically look at, look at these as ASG meetings uh, quarterly from a national level. So these are our four that we have picked out for, for this year. Uh, as you will see, March 12th, we have peristoma hernias. We have a Dr. Jenny Speranza and her WOCN are going to be the speaker. For those of you that were in Houston, she was there and spoke on peristoma hernias, and it was a it was standing room only to get into it. Uh, as, a, as a peristomal patient, a hernia patient, I didn't get to go see it because Amy Lee and I were presenting, so I really am looking forward to being able to hear this talk because it was very, very, very well accepted uh, at the conference. Uh, May 14th, we're going to have Eating with an Ostomy. Uh, nutrition is absolutely critical to uh, our existence and being able to keep thing, keep our lives going. September 17th, intimacy, sexuality, and pregnancy with an ostomy. That's going to be Dr. Nyland, Dr. Nyland Nandi, uh, who again spoke at the conference and was outstanding. We got great reviews from that as well. So that's why we decided to bring that back uh, to be able to let more people have an opportunity with that. And based on the handout that Amy Lee was showing before, uh, we're going to have emotional health and healing. We're going to have a panel of, of uh, mental health experts talk on November 19th. 
these are designed, they will be recorded, and these are designed for ASG groups or ASG leaders to be able to uh, present them for people that maybe weren't able to attend, but they are also available for people to be able to attend to hopefully broaden their per perspective and get a different idea and see some different topics that uh, they might find of interest. Uh, so that's pretty much what the Ostomy Academy is, which now brings me to talking about advocacy and gives me the great pleasure to introduce Janine Gleba. Janine has been working at UOA for over eight years. Advocacy is a core component of UOAA's mission. As UOAA's advocacy manager, she manages the robust advocacy program and ensures the organization's advocacy goals are met. She is nationally recognized and award-winning advocate, most recently being honored as the recipient of UOAA's Presidential Award in 2000, 2023. Janine also serves as the chairperson of the Digestive Disease National Coalition. Guys, she does a tremendous job for us. She has done things on Capitol Hill. She is also she has just done so much to be able to advance uh, ostomy care uh, for a non ostomate uh, She just does a tremendous job for United Ostomy Association, and it is great, my great pleasure to in, to give you Janine. Okay, Janine. There you are. Okay, there I am. Thank you, Steve. Okay, we can go back to the slide deck. And next slide. Okay, well, first I wanted to start off talking about some of the great things we accomplished in 2023. Um, something that we do behind the scenes that most people probably aren't aware is that we are continually trying to strengthen the relationships that we have with other organizations, for example, the WOCN Society and the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation. And we also like to cultivate new partnerships because we recognize we are just a small nonprofit organization. Um, to have a louder voice, we're stronger together. So we do a lot of work with other um, organizations. So one thing that we did was we worked with a company called Geologics last year, and uh, we created a new resource called Ostomy Answers You Need. It's available on our website. And um, we received approval from their compliance department. And for those hospitals that they partner with to provide ostomy care, this will be a new resource that they share with ostomy patients that come into them. We also worked with AA Home Care, and we created a new self-advocacy tool uh, to help um, ostomates who might have an employer with a self-funded insurance plan that don't provide um, or cover ostomy supplies. So this is a tool that um, explains, you know, basically why ostomy supplies should be covered. So that's also on our website and just a couple of examples of the things that we created last year. Um, every year we engage our grassroots advocates in legislative efforts. Um, unfortunately, it takes many years to get bills passed. So, um, Nothing passed last year that we were advocating for, but we're still um, going strong. A lot of things have been happening with some of the bills, and I'll talk about that shortly. Uh, we also supported efforts for the past couple of years with a coalition uh, basically led by Coloplast um, that's been resulting in improvements in Medicaid plans. And last year, we had improvements in the states of Missouri, New Jersey, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. So that's always great to see when um, Medicaid coverage gets better for our community. We publish many articles in the Phoenix Magazine and on our website. Of course, every year on the first Saturday in October, we celebrate Ostomy Awareness Day. And last year was another great year. Every year, um, I'm proud of how much is done, um, the different collaborations we have, um, how many people are getting involved and being outspoken on this day. And of course, we have our Run for Resilience. So um, it's always just a great thing that we do every year. Um, one of our biggest and probably most exciting thing that we did was um, we just uh, released a new online educational course uh, called the Roadmap to Establishing Outpatient Ostomy Services. And they'll be putting a link um, in the chat for everyone. But basically, this is to why we did this was we've in the past gotten several calls um, and inquiries from nurses, some ASG leaders, um, asking for guidance on how they can open up an outpatient clinic um, where they are. So this is something we decided to take on as a priority to um, help ensure ostomates receive that 
quality continuum of care. So um, basically it's guidelines on how to um, open up one. We talk about billing, we have videos, there are checklists for people. We talk about the team of people you will need to have a successful clinic, uh, the inventory you might wanna have in your clinic, um, a whole bunch of things. And actually I'm, I'm excited uh, to let you know that today we just found out that um, an organization is going to sponsor um, credential, uh, doing the credentialing of the program so that in a few weeks, we're gonna be able to have a, another pathway to the course on our website where nurses will be able to, or anyone for that matter, uh, could um, obtain continuing education credits for the class. So that's really exciting to um, for this to happen for this course. Uh, and it's nothing like this exists out there. So it's a, a, a great thing for our community. And really the end game and ideally is we hope even if it's just one new clinic that opens up, it'll be worth um, you know all the time and effort that was put into this. So uh, again, the more access to care that people have, the better. Okay, next slide. Okay, some of the exciting 2024 advocacy goals. So another thing that we've been working on for over a year now, um, it, it's been a long, um, project, uh, we've been working with um, a, a great volunteer helping us, is that we're creating an interactive web-based game for the pediatric population. Now, you might be wondering, what does that have to do with advocacy? But what we're doing is we are encouraging at a young age um, to self-advocate. And like our patient bill of rights, we want this population of patients to know what to expect for the surgery, um, let them know that they're not alone for the surgery, and um, again, you know, ha ha empower them to be able to ask questions before they undergo this life-changing um, surgery. So um, I'm going to share real quick um, a little uh, teaser, a little game trailer to uh, let everyone see what it's going to be all about. In revving up with an ostomy, you are in the driver's seat. UOAA wants kids to have the best care possible. So in this interactive game, they will perform fun challenges while learning about what to expect before, during, and after ostomy surgery. Oh, and all kids who make it to the finish will receive a special prize from UOAA. Get ready to hit the road soon. Okay, so we're real excited for that to happen. Um, hopefully we're done with it by the end of the year. Another big project that we've been working on last year and continuing this year, and we hope to launch it by the end of the year, um, is pioneering an online nationwide directory of outpatient ostomy services, again, helping ostomates have that access to care and know where to find it. We get lots of calls um, from people, you know, looking for that um, special care. So um, it's going to be similar to our support group finder where people will be able to enter their zip code and then um, it will pop up some of the um, local uh, clinics to them. Um, it is, uh, you know, bound to have some human error. You know, it is data driven. And uh, we've been working with volunteers to help us find all of the outpatient ostomy clinics across America. Actually, I know one of my volunteers is in here tonight. Thank you, I will see Chris for helping us with this project. Um, anyway, it's a, it's a big undertaking and we're really excited for it to launch later in the year. We'll still continue to create some new helpful self-advocacy tools. Um, this year it's World Ostomy Day on October 5th. Um, the international organization actually determines what the theme is. So we're excited to see what the theme is gonna be and we'll do all that we can to support the efforts around the world. And then, um, of course, there's always ongoing advocacy efforts for quality ostomy care and proper coverage of ostomy supplies. Um, part of the strategic plan is to advocate for more education of medical professionals. So many um, ostomates end up in the ER or their regular doctor, and they receive the person doesn't even know what an ostomy is or 
We know of people that have had to go to rehab uh, or home health, and the nurse is not a certified ostomy nurse. Um, so we're going to try and advocate that um, you know more prof medical professionals get proper education on ostomy care. Uh, we also will continue to work on our initiative for the Patient Bill of Rights to drive change. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of things we just um, you know continue to work on uh, day to day in the hopes of. Um, you know, improving quality of life for people with an ostomy. So that's all I have for now. A lot of exciting things happening. Um, I just touched on some of the things so that you'll, you'll see more throughout the year. At this point, I am going to introduce Ed Fuller. Ed has served as UOAA's communications and outreach manager since 2016. Ed tries to raise the profile of UOAA and reaches ostomates wherever they may be in their ostomy journey. He composes the organization's messaging and print and online publications. He oversees UOAA social media networks and produces the latest news on ostomy.org, the Ostomy Academy webinars, and he also collaborates with UOAA partners. So welcome, Ed, to the event. All right, thanks so much, Janine. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, just so, you know, Janine is the reason I have so many thing, good things to report to to all of you and so much great news to share. Um, you know, one of the things that we've wanted to do for years is just reach people wherever they are, find people uh, who aren't familiar with UOAA and try to connect them to all the resources and, and great things that we have going on. Um, so in, in that regard, we've always wanted to do a public service announcement that you may see uh, other organizations and causes do. Um, so this is really, you know, something we've been wanting to do for years, uh, you know, to try to drive that ostomy awareness and, you know, connect new people. Um, so what we did was we partnered with a with an ostomate, um, Kayla Kaba, and she um, worked with a videographer who did a great job. And uh, we came up with a good script and uh, it's going to be previewed here for you. I'll give you a little sneak peek of the video. Uh, it's great because she was able to do it in both English and Spanish. Uh, you have a 30 second and a one minute version of the video. And, uh, you know, so the, the goal is to get that on as many uh, TV stations as we can, maybe free of charge. If anyone has connections to a local uh, TV station, you know, we could share that with you and you could uh, uh, try to get them to run it. Unfortunately, usually when they do, it's probably like two or three in the morning. So uh, we did put a, uh, aside a small budget so we can uh, get this PSA video other places, such as uh, some of the new streaming outlets that are now available, uh, like you see on your smart TV. Uh, so yes, yeah, so I'm just excited to, to uh, share this uh, video right now with you. So you'll be the, the first people to see it. Hi, I'm Kayla, and I'm one out of one million people in the U.S. living life with an ostomy. You'll likely encounter someone with an ostomy today, but you would never know we had a life-saving surgery. We're people of all ages living life to the fullest after surgery for cancer, abdominal trauma, birth defects, or like me, inflammatory bowel disease. We just happen to go to the bathroom differently. If you or someone you love has or may have ostomy or continent diversion surgery, they do not need to struggle or feel alone. You can find free educational resources, peer support, and self-advocacy tools provided here at United Ostomy Associations of America, ostomy.org. Great, so I, I hope you liked the video. Um, you know, as you can see, it's a very positive message, uh, you know, just showing everyday life. And, uh, you know, we're hoping that, you know, maybe someone uh, may see that and, you know, then tell their cousin who has an ostomy or a friend and, or if you're even just contemplating surgery or have that in the back of your mind, you know, to have that more positive message out there in the, in the media landscape. Uh, you know, I think it will be a benefit for everyone. Uh, so uh, thanks to Kayla and everyone who worked on that. And uh, we'll be getting that out probably on, on YouTube and things like that soon. So we'll be asking everyone to 
to share it. Uh, we'll also be looking to do different videos uh, throughout the year and in future years too, to try to connect with people, uh, whether that be education, things on social media, or uh, maybe another pu public service announcement like this. Um, so yeah, so uh, coming up next, I'm going to introduce Christine Ryan, who's the executive director. I have the pleasure of working with Christine in our office in Maine. Uh, she's been with us since May of 2017. Uh, she manages the staff and handles the daily operations of the organizations. She's also involved with education and conference committees, has established relationships with our industry supporters and many other organizations. She just does a great job really uh, helping us connect to so many different people. So thanks, Christine. You can take it away. Great. Thanks, Ed. Hello, everybody. It's nice to see you all this, this evening. I have quite a few things that I wanted to cover with you tonight. Um, the first thing is we're going to talk about our education committee. Whoops. Then we'll go to the next slide. There we go. Whoop. Sorry about that. So um, you're seeing two beautiful ladies that have really spent a lot of hours volunteering for UOAA this past year. And I'm um, happy to, to um, let you all know that they are going to be our co-chairs for 2024 for the Education Committee. Um, they are Lori Corona, who is on the left-hand side, and Kim Adams on the right. Lori is a retired WOC nurse, and Kim is a practicing WOC nurse in New Hampshire. The committee is made up of WLC nurses and fellow ostomates who are also nutritionists, adjunct professors, and educators. Our medical advisory board includes colorectal surgeons, a urologist, a GI doctor, and WLC nurses. The current chairperson for that committee is Dr. Richard Rood. And as you all may know, it is education is a critical component of UOAA's mission, and we continue to update our current resources and develop new ones. Our educational material is developed by our educational committee and reviewed by our medical advisory board. Our next slide. We're going to talk about our resources that are coming up this year and some things that we've just accomplished. So you will find our newest publication, which is Nephrostomy Facts on the Continent Diversions and Other Ostomy Types webpage. There is very little information on nephrostomies, so we're very pleased to be adding this as a resource on our website. Members of the committee, myself, and members of UOA's board of directors will also be working together on updating our new ostomy patient guide. The last one was published in 2020. The 2024 version will be published and posted on the website in early April. The committee has also been updating our surgery specific guides over the last two years, and I'm happy to report the newest guide, Living with an Ilioanal pouch guide will be available soon. This is replacing the J pouch guide that we currently have on our website. And you'll notice that a lot of our medical illustrations, which are done by Body Scientific, are in the guides and will also be on our website. So hope you're pleased with all of those new illustrations. Our final publication to be worked on is Living with a Continent Urostomy Guide, and this will be completed in 2024. I also wanted to let you know about a great new resource, especially for new ostomates, that can be found on Living with an Ostomy FAQ's webpage. It's titled Speaking Stoma, a Communication Guide for People with Ostomies. This publication was produced by the Speaking Stoma Project and Dr. Joga Aventori, who was also a, a conference speaker at our 2023 conference. Our next slide, we're gonna talk about our new web pages. So I'm great to state that um, if you're looking for any of our resources, you can now find them on a new UOAA resource library webpage, which is located under Ostomy Information. The new webpage provides easy access to all of our download, downloadable PDFs all in one place now, which I know a lot of people were asking for. So you'll have to visit that library. A top priority this year for the committee will be to create a new Ostomy Reversals webpage. We know many people have their ostomies reversed, and there are a number of questions that need to be addressed regarding this topic. A colorectal surgeon on our medical advisory board, along with, me with members of the committee, will be working on this shortly. I also have been working with the Pediatric to Young Adult Ostomy Webpages Development Committee to create a series of webpages for pediatric to young adult ostomates and their parents. 
This committee is made up of pediatric WOC nurses, parents of children with ostomies, young adult ostomates, and members of our board. These web pages we will be launched later in March or early April. And that new video that Janine showed you will be on there eventually about the with the game. So we're excited to have that um, available to you shortly. We will also continue to we also continue to receive requests for ostomates to participate in clinical trials and research studies. A new web page is being added to the website for those interested in participating in these. And as you know, there's also a take a survey web web page that you can also take a look at when you get a chance. And finally, we, are, we know how helpful it is for visitors to the website to find clothing and accessories designed for the ostomy community, checking out new ostomy products and to find suppliers. So we are offering advertising space on our website for companies to share their information and that will be coming soon as well. And last but not least, our last slide is on our runs. And I'm pleased to announce that we will be holding our 2024 Run for Resilience Ostomy 5K events um, and they're being planned as we speak. This is UOAA's major fundraising event of the year and a great way for the ostomy community to come together to raise awareness and celebrate World Ostomy Day on Saturday, October 5th. As you can see, we are planning a number of events across the country, the newest being in Ohio and hopefully Illinois. The majority of the runs will be held on October 5th and some will be on the Saturday before or after as well. More information on the runs can be found on ostomy.org backslash 5K. You can check out this way this web page on, on a regular basis as it will continue to be updated with information on runs coming up and also World Ostomy Day. Now I'd like to introduce Julie Roskamp to you. Julie has been a certified wound ostomy continent nurse for the past 30 years. She has practiced in acute care, long-term care and home health. She was the founder and president of Twin City Wound and Ostomy Associates, Inc., a private practice in Minneapolis until she joined the Wound Company Provider Group leading the care delivery team across the U.S. In addition to her professional responsibilities, she volunteered countless hours with the St. Paul Ostomy Association. Welcome, Julie. Thanks, Christine. Well, I'm very honored to be here tonight with all of you to announce the UOA Virtual Ostomy Clinic. Uh, this clinic is available nationwide, and it doesn't matter where you are in your ostomy journey. You can, you can take advantage of the ostomy clinic, and no matter where you live, we're across all 50 states. This initiative is a joint venture between the UOAA. The Wound Company is independent. It is a medical group and will be providing the medical advice that ostomates seek. And we are improving access to care no matter where you live, whether it's rural or it's hard to get into the city for a wound clinic visit. We're there and can provide these services right in your home. Next slide. So for a one-time direct payment of $125, the ostomate can enroll in a 30-day program, and that program will include telehealth visits uh, via Zoom. And in between those telehealth visits, they will have support via text messaging and email, you know, throughout that 30-day program. And all of this, again, in the privacy of their own home. Next slide. All of our nurses are certified ostomy nurses through the Wound Ostomy Continence Nurses Certification Board. We have staff in all 50 states and the District of Columbia. We are independent of any manufacturer relationships. So this means that we're giving you unbiased uh, advice for your ostomy and your pouching supplies and anything accessories that we might recommend. Next slide. So at the beginning of the program, we provide one telehealth visit and that it helps the patient or the ostomate work toward goals that fit into their personal lifestyle. And we help that patient achieve the best wear time possible. Uh, we give um, support to the ostomates and their caregivers to help prevent and manage skin irritations and any rashes or any other complications that can happen around their stoma. Next slide. Our staff is available to answer questions after that telehealth visit via text messaging and email. You can send in pictures if you need to. Um, we provide education about diet, nutrition, hydration, 
uh, intimacy. And we circle you back to the already wonderful publications that are available through the UOAA website. If needed, we'll give you another telehealth visit within that 30-day period uh, to follow up and make sure that the recommendations we've made are, are um, working for you. If we may need to make any changes or, or if you want to continue on for another 30 days, each 30-day each, uh, program is, is an additional 125, but um, some patients may need more than 30 days and, and that's fine. Next slide. So we do provide services to uh, new and existing ostomies. It doesn't matter how long you've had your ostomy. We uh, will work with patients with colostomies, ileostomies, and urostomies. Uh, we are only serving seeing patients that are in ostomates that are 18 years and older. Right now, we do not have services for the pediatric population. And we do not have interpretation services. It's English only at this time. However, we invite ostomates to involve their family and friends and they can interpret if needed. The next slide. So how to get to us. Uh, from the UOAA website, you will navigate to their virtual ostomy clinic and hit the get started button. And there, there'll be a patient agreement that you can read through and then sign. Once you've signed that, that will take you to a link to pay by credit or debit card. And we do welcome HSA cards. This is medical advice by nurses and should qualify for HSA or FSA. Uh, once the estimate is paid for that 30 day program, it begins. Uh, within one business day of you registering and paying, the ostomy nurse will reach out to you via text or email and get that first uh, telehealth appointment scheduled. Um, the first tel the telehealth appointments are generally 30 minutes in length. That way you can prepare to have your, you know, pouching supplies available if you need to have family and friends there, um, you know, to help you to make sure it's easy to manage your pouch and, and a camera at the same time you have people available. Uh, you do need to have Zoom uh, and some type of an internet to be able to do the telehealth visit. This can be on a tablet, a laptop, or a cell phone. So um, we're just really excited to have this, you know, clinic available to people when they need it. And um, that's kind of where we're, we're at. We're just very honored to be able to bring this first time virtual ostomy clinic um, to everybody. Thanks, Julie. Yeah. That was really great information. We're really excited to be partnered with you on this. We have some um, questions from our viewers, but before we get started on that, I had a couple things I wanted to just clarify. Um, what are your office hours, so to speak? Well, we have office hours Monday through Friday. Our, uh, our actual headquarters is in central time, so we go by central time, so 8 a.m. central to 4.30 p.m. central time. So if you live on the on the East Coast, you might be able to sneak a visit in after work, or if you live on the West Coast, you might be able to sneak a visit or two in before uh, we actually, you know, because it's 6 a.m. So uh, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Central Time. Okay, thank you. And do your ostomy nurses, um, do they have, are they on call? Do they have after hours for emergencies? At this time, we don't have any after hours or weekends or on call, you know, services uh, on the holidays. Just it's a it's a new clinic and we need to kind of see what the demand is going to be before we have staff available, you know, 24 seven. So uh, we're going to get started with the Monday through Friday and try to get as many patients as we can in that time frame. That makes sense. OK, let's get to some viewer questions. Uh one of the questions you might be able to see on the screen is the clinic ready to go. Is it up and going now? Yes, it is. You can navigate to get started with the clinic through the UOAA website. It is ready. Okay. Uh, another question from Deb Fox. Is there a limit to telehealth appointments in this 30-day period? The 30-day period generally includes two telehealth visits, um, one at the beginning and one at the end. Now, if we do have some, we call them edge cases, you know, most patients are going to um, not need quite as many. Uh, we try to gauge it around two, but if somebody needs an extra visit and we're, we're going to work with them and try to get them the support they need. 
Okay, great. Uh, I know the answer to this, but there's many, it came up during our early discussions. Does the clinic accept our run through insurance? Unfortunately, it does not. Uh, the complexity of uh, running something like this through insurance in all 50 states is, is really, <laughs> I can't even explain how complicated that would be. So we're starting with a private pay um, and made it at a price point that we thought hopefully most people can afford and did not limit it to just one time. That's why we extended it to a 30 day period so that we could really work with patients to kind of get them through that, that whatever's going on with them, whether they're a new ostomy or somebody having problems. But just to clarify, you can use your FSA, HSA credit cards, correct? That's right. If you've got a debit, if you've got a debit card with your FSA or your HSA, that should input into our payment system and those will come right out of your HSA or FSA account. Okay. So Liz just put it up on the screen before I could ask it because this is an absolutely critical question. Is the clinic open for UOIA members only? And emphatically, the answer to that is no. It's absolutely let you answer that, you <laughs> that, you, that you understand. We've been talking with, about this since early in 2023. And part of the reason it came to be was because so many people have not had access to a WOCN nurse. So that's why UOAA has decided to affiliate with the wound company. We are we we are not in, involved from a clinical standpoint. We are just they're using our website to be able to help draw people. We certainly hope if you're not a UOAA member that you utilize the wound company that you will become a UOAA member. But it is absolutely imperative that you understand this is open to everybody that possibly may need an, that may need ostomy assistance. And I'm sorry <laughs> that, I, that I jumped in there, but I just wanted to be very emphatic about the fact that it's open to everybody. So you want to add anything, Julie? I do. I'm going to add another thing to that because um, it, we talk a lot about in the privacy of your own home, but if you um, are an ostomate that ended up after surgery in a skilled nursing facility and those the staff is not able to even understand, they may never have worked with ostomies or have limited um, knowledge about ostomies, it doesn't matter where you're at. We can provide that telehealth visit to you, whether you're a family member or an ostomate in an assisted living facility, in your home or a skilled nursing facility, a long-term care facility. Uh, another great question that was brought up by Michael. Is there a place to submit an unusual circumstance question? Uh, now, shoot, my screen moved and I've lost. Uh, here it is. It, is there a place to submit an unusual circumstance question? As I have an ileostomy and suffer from SBS2, my primary care physician hasn't been able to answer. So is it possible for them to contact the wound company to just ask a general question to see if indeed you might be able to work with them? Uh, not without navigating to the, you have to have paid for the program. Uh, okay. We're not there to answer medical questions outside of that. It has to be within the paid program, 30 day paid program. Okay. Okay. Um, how do I get an appointment with an ostomy nurse? I really need it. You just go through the UOAA website, uh, navigate to the virtual ostomy clinic. There will be a couple of areas in different spots that it will be a red says get started button. And once you sub, uh, sign the patient agreement and submit the payment, a message will be sent to our clinic. And then within one business day, someone will contact you and schedule that telehealth visit. There's an intake form where, where you'll put in your, your name and what's the problem, what type of ostomy do you have, uh, what's your cell phone number, what's your email address, how do you want to be contacted, and from there we'll, we'll schedule that. When we talk about one business day, for those of you that are maybe asking, don't quite understand that, so like if you are messaging us on a, let's say a Friday afternoon at 4 p.m., the next business day would be Monday unless it was a holiday. So then we would have that full day to get back to you. But our, our goal and what we're, we're working towards is that we are, we are getting back to people within one business day from when they've paid. And right now we're able to, um, uh, 
access and get patients to the visits as, as quickly as we can. You know, uh, we within a day or two, we should be able to get you um, scheduled for your first appointment. Thank you. So Liza wants to know um, if there'll be pediatric or neonatal attention in the near future. She says, us parents are pretty much lost at the time our babies leave the hospital and there's not enough information specifically for the baby patients. Can you speak to that, Julie? Yes, we've heard we've heard that a lot, um, loud and clear. We've had that question many times. In fact, when we uh, announced the virtual ostomy clinic a couple weeks ago, I had ostomy nurses across across the country starting to email me and and are you able to do pediatrics? So we are looking into it as a company um, right now. It's really about um, medical liability coverage. We have our our practices covered for adults. So we are actively looking into that. We have our operations manager looking to see how we can expand into pediatrics. Uh, and when we can do that, it'll be announced on the UOAA. Um, you know, the near future, I wouldn't say in the next month or so, but hopefully it's something we can, you know, if, if it's affordable enough for us to be able to um, pay the, the medical malpractice insurance for the pediatrics part of it. Unfortunately, that's all part of, of providing this type of service you know, as soon as we can, we will. And um, just to clarify, um, Emily, oops, Emily wanted to know, you get two video uh, telehealth visits in 30 days. Is that right? Yes. Um, and, so, and about the texting too, just clarify that. Yeah. So essentially, once you've signed up, we, we, we want to get a telehealth visit in right away, see what your problem is. And then we make recommendations. We try to help get samples. We have a lot of uh, different forms and ways to ask for samples from all the different manufacturers that are out there. And then we try to get those samples to you or, you know, if you want to call in and get your own samples and we make recommendations, those recommendations are sent to you in writing. So you get a copy of the whole assessment and the recommendations as well. And we give that a couple, two, three weeks so that you can use the, get the supplies, use the supplies and see how they go. And then we schedule another telehealth visit uh, toward the end of that 30 days to make sure that we have time to make other recommendations if need be. And yes, you can text, you could send a picture at your next pouch change and say, does this look better? Because maybe you have the supplies there that you need. So many times we find that ostomates are sent home, especially new ones, are sent home with these supplies and they don't remember, do they use the powder first? Do they use the skin sealant first? Do, do they put, I, we've had patients not even take the plastic off the back of their wafer because they didn't remember that part and they didn't understand why it didn't stick. So sometimes you have what you need there and you can send a picture. And I've done that a lot, uh, you know, as we piloted this program with, um, ostomy patients, they would send a picture every time they change their pouch and say, how's this look? Does this look better? Should I change things? And yes, we'll message back and forth. And those responses, again, are, are during those business days. So like if you're if you're sending us a message during the evening, you know, if you did a night pouch change, you'd, you'd receive a message back in the morning. It's not it's not instant because our nurses are working with multiple patients throughout the day, throughout the country. So. Mm -hmm. So we have a not really a question, but a comment from Michael who's asking if UOAA is advocating for more WOCN nurses as there is a whole area of Myrtle Beach area that they are swamped. That is exactly why we have team teamed up with the wound company because we have heard that over and over and over and over again. Uh, for those of you that were in, at the conference in Houston, uh, that, top, that subject came up constantly about not being able to find a WOCN nurse. That's why we have exactly, exactly why we did this affiliation with the wound company to give the entire country an opportunity to be able to have access. There's also a comment on here about $125 being being a, a, a an exorbitant amount. Uh, we we talked that we talked that number over numerous for for months. Uh, but keep in mind, if you go to a wound clinic with a certified WOCN in a local establishment, it's going to cost you over $100 to go to that. Uh, so I, I think $150 to be able to do it from the pr privacy of your own home uh, 
And, and also remember, this is an ever evolving process. So there, there's going to be there's going to be tweaks to it. We're just starting it and that kind of thing. Um, and then we've already discussed about maybe a so local support group can pay for an individual person who can't afford to it. So there, there's there's ways to be able to get around this, but it's not a perfect system yet. But it is certainly better than than what we've had in the past. So uh, I just think those are two really important points that that people understand that the, the purpose of why we're doing this is to be able to try to bring quality work, nursing care to anybody in the country, no matter where you are. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, exactly. Well said. Julie, is there anything you want to leave us with? Any last, oh, sorry. One, I guess we have one more question and then we'll, we'll have you leave us with them. Anything else we, we miss? Did we have one more question? Okay. I guess not. Anything else you want to close with? You know, we're just really happy to to have this opportunity, and we know that uh, for some people, that one hundred and twenty five dollars is a lot, is a lot of money. We recognize that, and um, but you know, we had to we had to start somewhere. Um, and it's it, there's there's a lot of infrastructure that goes into having a clinic like this and having somebody ab available five days a week in all fifty. You know, that's licensed in all fifty states. So um, rest assured that. We didn't take that number lightly, and we 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 tried to have it as low as we possibly could to make it affordable to most everybody. Julie, I think it's really important that you emphasize that point about what it costs the wound company to have a certification in fifty states around the country. Right. Uh, I know that I know that we talked about that in the early stages uh, about you know what your uh, startup costs were going to be, and I know I was very much surprised at it. But Nima did a great job of explaining to me why. So I, I think that it's really important that everybody understand to be able to provide this all around the country, all the certifications, all the letters of insurance, all the different things that had to have to be in place for the wound company to be able to exist are absolutely you know, imperative to have that stuff uh, is part of the reason why we're looking at the dollar figure we are. Uh, and I, again, I will tell you, we discussed that dollar figure from day one uh, to try to come up with what was the right number. So uh I just want you to understand, know that, that there was much, much, much discussion about it. Mm -hmm. So for anyone that wants more information, you can check that out on our website, um, ostomy.org backslash clinic. Um, there's also um, a tab on the homepage too that you can get a link there. So um, again, thank you so much, Julie, for sharing information about the UOAA virtual ostomy clinic provided by the Wound Company. We're really glad to have you on the program tonight. Thank you. All right, so now let's open this up to some questions um, from our other discussions that we had earlier in the evening. Let's start off with Vicki Jenkins. How can I get information about the companies that are self-funded but don't cover supplies? I'm having this issue now. I'm not quite following that. Um, Steve? Not either. Okay. I'm not quite understand where she's coming from there. Give us a little bit more um, input, Vicki, on what your situation is that you're dealing with. I see a little shout out from Brenda here. Brenda was my predecessor. Good to see you, Brenda. Um, so yeah, any questions that you have about about the conference, um, you know, any of the advocacy programs that we're running, um, anything about donation, ASGs, We'll fire those out and um, we'll make sure we get those questions answered for you. So we got a message that uh, the Facebook live feed did not start uh, when we actually started. So possibly some of you uh, may not have heard that August 14th, 15th and 16th in Orlando, Florida is, is the conference. And something that I failed to mention that I think is really important, it's actually the UOAA's 20th anniversary. Uh, so it's, it's you're going to see part of our theme is going to be involved to talk about UOA and it's our 20 year anniversary. Uh, so uh, I'm sorry that it didn't work right at the very beginning, but that's Orlando, August 14th, 15th and 16th at the Hyatt Grand Grand Cypress Resort. Awesome. OK, Chris Mullen, will this UOAA presentation be available in slideshow format instead of this live format? Um, so this will be, oh, go ahead, Ed. Yeah, I was just going to say, yeah, we can definitely get it to you, Chris. No worries. Awesome.
Any other questions? I also saw Brenda's comment on there. Brenda, you're Miss Dearly. Brenda's been a mentor of mine and, and around this organization from I first got involved with it. So uh, I love that that she's here and hopefully we're making her proud. So. Yes, for sure. Um, any information on dealing with cramps in the stoma area? That's more of a clinical question that I don't feel comfortable trying to, <laughs> trying to answer. So. Yeah, and I hate to put Julie on the spot about that. I would say, um, Beth, maybe reach out if you have a local ASG chapter and a WSC that's affiliated with that, that would be a great place to start. Um, feel free to email me if you need help finding somebody locally. Anyone else? Oh, here's a great question, Amy Lee. Did UOA meet its match for the wonderful donation offer? Yes, we did. Yes, we did. We actually hit uh, 56,000 56, uh, of our $50,000 match. So yes, we did it. We exceeded it and went over. Uh, and we greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate everybody's help for being able to do that. Uh, and we are just so thankful. And we're just hoping that we can continue to do that uh, in 2024 as well. Wonderful. All right, we've got a couple um, questions I'm seeing here. Uh, so this one's for you, Cheryl. Uh, will you send out a notice when they will start accepting reservations at the, um, the hotel in Orlando? Absolutely, it'll be advertised on our website as soon as we're ready. Okay, awesome. That means, that means somebody's ready. I'm ready too. <laughs> All right. Well, I think if that's all the questions that we have, um, anybody have anything else to add? Okay, Steve, I'll let you take this one. Where can I find information on ostomy reversal? That is one of the new things that's coming up onto the website. Correct me if I'm wrong, Christine. Isn't that yep. one of the things that you talked about? It is. Um, we're going to be devoting a whole web page to that. But in the meantime, there are two blogs on the website. Um, Lisa, so if you go to latest and put in um, a search on the right-hand side for ostomy reversals, you'll see the two blogs that were written regarding this topic. We need to thank Liz Hiles for working behind the scenes and helping us with our uh, follow the questions and the chats and, and the different comments that have been made. So thanks, Liz. Greatly appreciate it. Couldn't have done this without you and behind the scenes. Uh, I think from we're not getting any more questions. So I guess I will swing it back to Cheryl as the president to say any final words that she wants to, and then other then we'll bring it to a close. Okay. Thank you, Steve. I'd like to thank everyone again for being here tonight. I'd like to, to thank Christine Ryan, our executive director, Amy Lee Reese and Steve Vendivander. Vendivender for, uh, <laughs> sorry, Steve, I don't know if I'll ever get that right. I'll try. I don't think so. Our ASG coordinators for being here and, and coordinating this live event. I'd like to thank Janine Gleba, our uh, advocacy manager, and Ed Fuehler, our uh, social media director and um, outreach. And uh, Julie, our um, the new w WCN leading up our new um, virtual ostomy clinic. I really appreciate all of you, and I appreciate everyone who's been in on the live. Uh, we love you all, and um, keep coming back. Thank you, and good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.